So I'm 80% sure that I'm going to catch crap for this video. Got some new flies from the UK. Looking forward to hearing how you do on the Martin's Minnow. Tight lines. Martin from the UK. Thanks for the stickers. The flies will be put to good use. Articulating streamers. If you ask 10 different fishermen how they articulate their flies, you're gonna get like five different answers. And they're gonna be stuff like, the only way is to use mono. Man, you're crazy. Fluorocarbon's the only way to go. You guys have no idea what you're talking about. The only way to go is wire. Oh, really, guys? I think the best way is definitely braid. This is actually backing. I didn't have any braid, but I had plenty of backing. And then you get to hear the argument on the beads. Oh, you use beads? I don't use beads. Plastic beads. Glass beads. Huge beads. Skull beads. You wouldn't believe how long that took. So the style that I've landed on has its pros, its cons, and I'm gonna explain all that stuff. So I have the three main types of articulations here. I have the backing, the mono, and the wire. They all have their pros and their cons. And what we're gonna do is go over those pros and cons for you to figure out which one will work best for you. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is the backing. As you can tell, it's super flexible. Super flexible. That is one of the biggest pros of backing. But backing is very prone to foul on itself. I can sit here and wrap this around it very easy. This is the main problem I have with backing. So the pros of backing, it's it's very, very easy to tie in. There's not a problem tying in. It's, uh, it, it's very user friendly to tie in. This is actually the first material that I ever used in articulating a fly. I had some backing, I used it, and I was like, this is cool, it really moves a lot. Yeah. Um, it's very strong, it's gonna do a good job. It's gonna hold, it's gonna do its job. But backing's a viable option. Next up is mono. Some of the pros about mono, it, it's, it's cheap. It's very secure. When you, when you tie this in, mono gives a little bit, so your thread can actually grab the mono, sink into it a little bit, okay? So it's, it's, gonna, it's gonna do a good job holding, staying on the hook. And it's very, very strong. It's mono. It's gonna be dependable. I really only have one con for mono. Mono's slick. Like, like it's really slick. I have this tied in really, really well. And what I can do is I can still force this around the shank. So my mono's tied in on top of the hook shank, like always, both sides, tied in on top. I can force this to move around the hook just with my fingernail and I've tied it in as hard as I can tie it in so my problem with mono is everybody catches those stupid little rainbows on the back hook right what a little rainbow does when they come in on the back hook is they sit there and spin when they do that the mono will start to spin around the hook shank okay and if you have a body tied on this, you cannot fix it back. That fly will get to where it does not swim correctly. So just in the time that I've been sitting here talking to you, I have slowly worked this to the side of the hook, which has made the bottom hook turn completely sideways. Last up is wire. Some, some of the pros about wire are it's obviously very strong. Most of the wires have a little bit of a texture to them, 
So when you're tying them on, your thread wants to grab it. It doesn't give like the mono does, but it has a little bit of a texture to it so it helps hang on to the wire. It's not going to want to foul as much as the backing, um, but it's not going to slip around like the mono. Some of the cons about wire is it's more expensive. It definitely costs more than the mono and the, the backing. And another con is it's harder to tie in and, and do it right than mono or backing. They are, mono and backing are very user friendly. The wire is not as user friendly as those others. There's a little bit of a chance of breaking. I'm gonna tell you right now, chances are you're gonna lose that fly before that wire breaks. Um, I've seen wire break like three times and it was never on a fish so mm, yeah and that's out of thousands of hours of streamer fishing I'm sure to give you information draw your own conclusions do whatever you want to do but I'm a wire guy <laughs> so the next topic the spacers is actually really funny because I may have convinced myself to change from the way that I've done it for years and years and years. There are really three ways to look at the spacers. You can go with, with nothing, you can go with glass beads, you can go with plastic beads. Eh, maybe four. You can go with big plastic beads. Okay. Okay, so to knock one out, just real quick. The big huge beads always seemed obtrusive to me. Obtrusive? Is that the word? I don't know if that's the right word or not, but the big beads just always seemed big. I, I, I've just never been a fan of that. Um, I think the size is maybe subjective and it really doesn't, you know, it's not that big a deal. Not my cup of tea. Glass beads. I have a lot of people that totally disagree here, uh, but I've always been a fan of glass beads. I like the glass beads. Um, they are shiny and bright and reflective and uh, they're, they're cool. I like them. Some of the cons, well, the con about glass beads is they can break. Now, what I'm gonna say here is, yeah, they don't break very often. The, the, the guys that say, oh, they always break, uh, I don't know what they're hitting. I don't, they're hitting the side of the boat every other cast. I don't, they're, you, if you bounce them off a rock, I, I, they just don't break that often. I, they really don't. Uh, so, I mean, take it for what it's worth. Yeah, they don't break that often. Yeah, you know, that's, that was my go-to until I sat down to do this video. So I was a glass bead guy for a long time. You go back and watch the videos, I'm gonna slide three glass beads down most of the transitions. Uh, I, that's just the way I do it. But then I sat down to do this video and, and I, I found some beads that were the same size as my glass beads, but they were plastic. Plastic beads. So these plastic beads are very intriguing and I'm thinking I'm probably gonna change. They're not the big obtrusive new words that are just just too much uh, in, in my eyes. I, a lot of people like those beads, I just don't. Um, they have a little extra flash to them. They are not gonna break. They're the same size as the glass beads they're going to be more consistent in their shape because they're plastic. They're completely, you know, they're, just, they're plastic. They're going to be the same exact shape. I think I'm going to switch to plastic beads, the little plastic beads. I do. So during this video earlier, whenever I was talking about the wire, I said something about it's not the easiest thing to tie in or, you know, something like that. The wire is not as user friendly. So what I'm gonna actually do is just show you how and why I tie my wire in. So by far my favorite thread for streamer tying period is UTC Ultra and 210. Super strong, you can really crank on it, you can make it cord up, you can make it flatten out. 
super versatile thread. So the first thing I'm gonna do is lay a few thread wraps right here. Now I'm gonna spin my bobbin to make it cord up. Now I'm gonna candy cane down the hook until I get right in between the hook point and the hook barb. Then I'm gonna lay a few really close wraps down to the barb and then wrap open all the way back here. So what I've done by doing this is created a very rough surface that is not gonna be slick. You can actually hear it. So what this style does is creates hills and valleys with the thread. Each hill and valley is a stopping point when I wrap my thread over the wire and bind it down. Okay, so I'm gonna lay my wire down there. I'm gonna take three or four wraps and pull to the breaking point. Wrap, 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 pull to the breaking point. So what is happening is I'm binding that wire down and up and down and up over those thread wraps. So now I'm gonna open wrap back to the front and leave it there. Still rough. Now I'm gonna put on my plastic beads my second hook. Run it through all three beads. Tie it down. Now I'm gonna take arrow point scissors and use this to cut that off. That way you don't mess up your, that way you don't mess up your scissors there it is okay so there you go articulating flies it's not hard nothing hard about it like I said I, I think I'm probably gonna catch a little crap about this video because some of my best friends are mono guys and but they, they swear by it so so what I'm saying is you know, what what I like is what I like but I hope I put this into context as what the pros are for each the cons are for each and and let you make your own decision 